Hi everyone, thanks for finding your way to my little YouTube channel. My name is Tobias, this is Anne, and today we are in Greece, exact um, at the Mount Olympus. And our plan is to hike up and down in three stages. And if you like to find out uh, how we'll make it, stay here and we'll find out together. Starting point of our first stage was Litororo. Our route took us along the European long distance path E4, through the Enipea Scorch and further to the refuge Spilius Agapitos. On the second stage we first continued on the E4 to the peaks of Scala and Scolio and went back on the E4 path below Mythicas and Stefani peaks to the refuge Iosos Apostolides. The third stage finally took us across the plateau of the Muses and further downhill to the parking lot Gotsia. From the town of Litororo, which lies at the foot of Mount Olympus, we walked about a kilometer in the early morning hours to the entrance of Enipea Scorch and the start of our ascent in the Olymp National Park along the E4. The path through the gorge led us up and down regularly, mostly over steps or bare rocks, to our first intermediate destination about 10 km away, the Tavern Brionia, where most Olympus to a start. Accordingly, we had the way through the gorge to ourselves for long stretches. We hiked along narrow paths along the slopes of the gorge, often under the canopy of the forest, broken up with beautiful views of the gorge as well as beautiful views ahead and back. A constant companion of the first section was the Enipea stream, which we crossed several times. The Enipea is 21 km long, originates near Prionia and overcome 1100 meters in altitude before it finally flows in the Aegean Sea. After about two thirds of the way, we reach the chapel and cave of Saint Dionysos. Dionysos was a monk in the 16th century and supposedly lived in the cave for a certain time. A little further up the hill, we made a short detour to the monastery of Agios Dionysos, founded by the same monk. On site, however, we found out that the monastery is currently a large construction site. After the destruction in the Second World War, Reconstruction is currently taking place. As we approached the cave and the monastery as well as Brionia, the path became noticeably fuller. No wonder after all, there were parking lots and sites nearby. The Enipeas is also popular here for bathing. 
arrived in Brionia, it was time for a little coffee break, and we had the opportunity to bottle water at a spring. Freshly strengthened, we started the second section of our first stage, we ascend to the refuge Spilius Agapitos at about 2000 meters altitude. From here the path became much more crowded since, as mentioned, most of the ascents to the summit begin in Brionia. However, before we started the sweet ascent to the refuge with still 6.5 km to overcome and over 900 meters in altitude, we passed the Enipeas waterfall. After the waterfall, however, it was time for the final ascent over steps, rocks and narrow paths. A highlight of a special kind for us was sitting very inconspicuously under one of the numerous steps a small scorpion had made itself comfortable in the shade. During the ascent it is worth pausing now and then to enjoy the ever improving view. Despite the outstanding path, climbing Mount Olympus in August in full sun was not the easiest of undertakings as I found out several times. Ja, der Tobi sieht nicht nur so fertig aus, der ist so fertig. 200 Höhenmeter haben wir noch. Nein, das ist keine Zeitlupe. Tobi ist so langsam. Finally, in the afternoon, we reached the refuge Spilius Agapitos, where we spent the night. The next morning, we were up early, because we didn't want to miss the sunrise on the slopes of Mount Olympus. We weren't disappointed for getting up early either. After a small breakfast, we went uphill again. It was only about 2.5 km to the summit of Scala, our first intermediate destination, but we had to overcome more than 800 meters in altitude. A route for which we should need more than 2 hours. Well me, and would probably have been faster. On the way there was a lot going on again. In addition to the many hikers, we also saw some chamois that crossed our path on the ascent. After a strenuous ascent, we reached the fourth highest peak of Mount Olympus. From here you could see the highest peak Mythicas directly, the ascent of which would have meant a bit more adorous climbing. For today, the ascent with heavy luggage and many kilometers in our bones seemed too difficult. So we turned to the second highest peak, the Scolio, which at 2911 meters is only 7 meter lower than the Mythicas. From the Scolio, as well as from many places on Mount Olympus, we had an outstanding view, thanks to the good weather. In the picture you can see from left to right. The Plateau of the Muses, our destination today, the Stefani Peak, also called the Throne of Zeus, Mythicas and Scala.
After a short break at the summit on Skolio, we went back a bit and downhill. Here I used the regained strength to work as a flower photographer. Because of the loose ground, it should be said that the descent is sometimes more difficult than the ascent. Our further path finally led us away from the E4 and in an arc below the peaks of Mythicas and Stefani to the plateau of the Muses. After arriving at the refuge Yosos Apostolidis, we didn't rest for long. We went on a small tour around the three smaller secondary peaks on the edge of the plateau. Our first destination, seen here in the background, was Prophetis Elias. On the summit is the chapel of the same name, which is the highest in the Balkans and the highest building of the Orthodox Church. The founding of the chapel goes back to an old friend, St. Dionysos, back in the 16th century. From there we cross the plateau again, past the refuge and climb the peaks of Tumba and Mikritumba. On the way we saw some chamois again. On the morning of our descent, there was another sunrise to admire, which bathed Mount Olympus in orange light. Then it was time to head across the plateau towards the stage destination of Gorzia, a parking lot on the road between Litororo and Brionia. This morning we also got to know the somewhat rougher side of the Olympus weather. It was windy on the plateau. Wenn die Esel kommen, will ich sie auch haben.
Since this section of our tour only had very few signs, good advice was expensive at the one or the other fork in the road. Sometimes even the map didn't help. However, we were on the supply route for a refuge on the plateau, which was sometimes used daily by mules. With this knowledge, orientation is much easier. You followed the legacies of mules. So we continued downhill past another refuge until we finally arrived at the Godzilla parking lot. Our trip to Mount Olympus turned out to be an extremely strenuous undertaking in the form we carried out. The many meters in altitude proved to be quite exhausting in combination with the distance, the condition of the path and summer temperatures, which should not be underestimated. The Enipea Gorge, which is less frequented than the section from Peonia, was a beautiful path that should not be missed. But the rest of the route was in no way inferior to the gorge in terms of hiking pleasure. Breathtaking nature and landscape, many beautiful views and some sights as well as the demanding path made the trip to Olympus a worthwhile experience for us, which we will repeat again but then with the ascent of Mythicas. Finally a few words about the signage. The signage along the E4 was basically there, so that you could easily follow the path here. Aside the E4 route, you had to get a little creative. A good map, GPS track should definitely be included in your hiking gear. There is also a lot of hiking on the individual paths, so if in doubt, you can ask for directions. It's done, we hiked on the top of Mount Olympus. It's a hard but absolutely amazing um, trip. Much to see on the way, old monasteries, holy fountains, small paths, animals like um, lizards, butterflies or a scorpion. So if you stay in Greece and would like uh, to hike, Mount Olympus is absolutely worth it. Yeah, this is it. Um, we hope you enjoy the trip and would like to see you the next time.
Serpentine um Serpentine steigen wir die Schluchtwand. Mir, läuft die Brühe. Mir auch. Wir sind ja gerade mal am Anfang. Ja, vor allem wir haben noch 7 Uhr oder so, ist noch ganz früh. Ja, ein acht, aber ja. Ah ja. ja. Vorhin war es noch sieben. So, kletter mal da rum, dann sieht man, wie es weitergeht. Heute stimmt der Martin, wenn er mich schon schützen sieht. <lacht> Warum? Ja, nein, ich will immer so entspannt aus dem <lacht> Ja, hier nicht mehr. Nee, hier, nee. <lacht> oh, Hilfe! <lacht> Geh weg! Oh, Mist, hat er mir die Aufnahme versaut. So ein fetter Brummer, ich wusste nicht, was das war. Gehen wir da noch um die Ecke rum. Oh, jetzt muss ich wieder aufs Klo. Nein, schon die Schnippel ab hier hoch. Wieso? Aber nicht die Pumpe, sondern das Bein, oder was? Nee. Ah, ob alles okay wäre. Oh, ja. Ach so. Ah, boah, ich hoffe, dass du trinken brauchst. Du hast Dusche, Wasser, alles gut. Ja, ist ja gut, dass sie sich Sorgen machen. Dass man hier nicht alleine gelassen wird. Wenn ich Glück habe, kommen jetzt hier gerade die Esel vorbei. Dann gehen wir auf die, auf die Wiese hoch. Sie ah. Ich glaube, dass das so ist. Ah jo. Da kommt was. Yippie! Wir gehen hier gerade zur Seite. Nehme ich sie auf? Ja. Ja, so was. Tokata Fähre mal auf uns bleibt, bitte. Ähm, an der Weg immer. Hm? Wieso sagst du jetzt nochmal Hallo? Ach, ja, wieso hast du das nicht gesagt? Nein. Du sagst Hallo am Anfang, wir sind am Ende vom Video, da ja, musst du halt nochmal Hallo ja sagen. Noch mal, ja, dann machst du halt nochmal weg.